Hello, good evening, Mariam. Mariam, am I audible to you? Okay. We will wait for two, three minutes so that other students could also join and then we will start the session. If it is okay with you. Okay. Meanwhile, if you have any doubt relating to previous class, you can ask me about that. We did a financial statement in the previous session and I told you to revise the uh, financial statement properly because we'll be doing questions based on it today. Questions based on the financial statement is uh, pretty easy. Uh, when all the questions uh, basically in from, uh, various items will be given, you, need to, you will have to identify the items under which a head that will be covered and in under what subhead that item will fall. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll do a few questions based on it and you will get a fair idea about what that. All right, everyone. See, in the previous session, we discussed all these things. Next one. Yeah. So we understood the financial statement. In fact, the balance sheet section, wherein I told you that the the first thing that appears in the balance sheet is the shareholders fund, which comprises of the share capital reserve and surplus money received against share. Warrant. And under shared capital, these items are covered. Under reserve and surplus, these are the various items. Then under non-current liability, non-current liabilities divided into four parts, long-term borrowing, before tax liability, other long-term liability, long-term provisions, and different different uh, items that fall under it. And then we discuss current liability, which comprises of primarily four uh, subheads, like short-term borrowing, trade table, other current liabilities, short-term provisions. And similarly, we also talked about the asset and its various heads and major heads and sub -heads. Okay, so to, uh, I'll be continuing from the same point. We'll discuss you questions based on it. You will get a fair idea what kind of question is asked uh, in the exam from this topic. <clears throat> All right, so, and I want you to note this down. Question one. Identify the major head and subhead. in case of following items.
Fourth item is premium on redemption. Of the venture. Second is loose tools. Third item balance. with balance with banks next reserve Interest on And stores and spares. <clears throat> all right, everyone. I hope. Uh, this is visible and clear to all of you. Guys, what you need to do, you need to identify these different items. Uh, you need to identify under which head they, these items will fall and in what category they will fall in. All right. So first of all, starting with the first item, can any one of you please tell me under which head premium and redemption of the venture falls into? Premium on redemption of debenture. Anyone? <clears throat> Premium on redemption of debenture falls under the head of non current liability. Can you see that, all of you? It falls under the subhead of other long term liability. Everybody is able to see that? Premium table and redemption of debenture. Everyone, please confirm if it is visible. Alima, is that clear to you? Evan, is that clear to you? Premium on redemption of debenture is falling under the subhead of other long, other long term liability, and the major head of it is non current liability. Is that right, Evan and Alima? Kindly confirm. Yes, sir. Yes, now so we can write down that premium on redemption of debenture will fall under the head of non current liability, first of all. Non current liability. And subhead of this will be other long term liability.
Understood? Now, moving to the second item, loose tools. Please go through the balance sheet and tell me under which major head loose tools fall into and in under what subhead loose tools. Inventories. Sorry, uh, Marine couldn't understood the point. Yeah, okay. So, all right. So you were saying it will fall under the category of the event. Right. That, that is right. Perfect. Very good. Yeah. So first of all, it will fall in, under the major head of current asset and under the sub heading of inventories. Everybody is able to see that? I mean, is that clear to you? Yes. Those tools is under the inventories and under the major head of current asset. So, current asset and subhead is inventories. See, all of you, you will only be able to answer these questions if you have the idea about the balance sheet and its major heads and subheads and the item that falls into it. And for that purpose, you will have to remember the balance sheet and you can only do by practicing as much, uh, as, uh, as many questions as you can. All right. Then moving to the next point, balance with the banks. Balance with the bank is what? Balance, obviously, the balance with the bank is a current asset. Let's find out. Balance with the bank it falls under the category of current asset, under the head, major head TV current asset, and it will fall under the sub, sub head of cash and cash equivalent. Tell me, you are able to see that? Sub head four, cash and cash equivalent, you will find bank there. Right? Okay. So, balance with the bank will fall under the current asset. And cash and cash equal. Okay. Then, last is, sorry, fourth item is text reserve. X reserve, X reserve falls under the category of the, let's find out. X reserve will fall under the category of the reserve and surplus. All the reserves are under the subhead of reserve and surplus, right? Uh, I think I did not mention tax reserve under it, but yeah, it, please add tax reserve under the subheading of reserve and surplus. All of you, Alima and Abin, we have wrote, we have written all these different type of reserve, but uh, skip uh, tax reserve under it. Please add reserve tax reserve as well under the reserve and surplus. Alima, is that clear to you? Abin, is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Can you repeat it? I'm saying see, we need to find out tax reserve. Item 4 is tax reserve, right? But tax reserve, first of all, it falls under the shareholders fund. Shareholders fund. And this will fall under the tax. It will fall under the reserve and surplus. That is what I'm telling you. So when you will go to the shareholders fund, see, this is our shareholders fund, item number one. And under shareholder fund, we'll go to the item B, reserve and surplus. Here I have written different type of reserve, but did not mention tax reserve. Please add tax reserve in it as well. Apart from the security premium reserve, capital reserve, debenture redemption reserve, all right, and, and the valuation reserve, tax reserve will also be there. Added. Alima, then? Yes, sir, tax reserve. 
Alima done. Mariam done. Done both of you. Understood, everyone. Yes, sir. Alima, waiting for your confirmation. Kindly confirm if it is clear to you or not. Alima, you were there in the previous session. I'm not sure because I guess you were not attending the previous session. Oh, she's not responding. Anyway, so next item is interest on interest on loan. Tell me, interest on loan will fall under which category? Interest on loan. See, it will fall under the current liability, under the major head of current liability, and, as, and, and under the subhead of other current liabilities. Major head will be current. Liabilities and subhead is other current liability. All right. <laughs> good, Mariam. Very, very, very good. And one last item is stores and spares. Tell me, under which major head stores and spares will fall and under it's subhead. Current asset, that is right. It will fall under the category of current assets. And under the inventories. Yes, that is right. Very good. Good job. All right, so this kind of question is generally asked from this topic. I hope you got the idea of the kind of question that will be asked from you in the examination based on the topic. Anyways, uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that all of you are done writing this. Then I've been, shall we move to the next question? I've been, kindly confirm. Yes, sir. We, yes, we can. Okay. All right, then. So uh, let's move to the next question, question number two. This is uh, a same question again. I'm giving you a few more items, and this time you'll have to identify and tell me under which category these items will fall in. All right. So just a moment. Please note this as well. Right. So first item is vehicles. Second item is Subsidy reserve. Our item is
mining rights. Provision for doubtful debt. <clears throat> then the ventures calls in advance Computer software Capital Reserve. Use tools again, and one last item Bank Overdraft. All right, everyone. Mariam, Abin, Halima. Everyone, I've written this down. Done. Done. Okay. All right. So just do one thing. Start finding the their major head and sub. I'm giving you ten minutes. All right. Do it quickly, and if you have any doubt, do let me know. We'll do one more question after it, and then probably we'll be starting a new chapter. It is the ratio analysis. Let's finish it quickly. In fact, let, let me help. Let me help you. Uh, see, vehicle is what? Vehicle is an asset, right? That will fall under the category of the asset. And obviously, vehicle is not the current asset. It will definitely fall under the category of the Fixed asset and fixed asset is called the non-current asset. So vehicle, if you if you look at the items that we uh, we have written in the previous session, you will find out the vehicle will be there in the uh, non-current asset category. The major head of the vehicle is non-current asset. Non-current asset and subcategory subhead is fungible asset. Fix asset and tangible asset. All right, then we have subsidy reserve. See, all the reserves fall under the category of shareholders fund and under the subhead of reserve and surplus. Remember that. So, subsidy and reserve will also take it to the major head of the subsidy reserve is shareholders fund. And subhead is reserve and surplus. All right. Then moving on to the next item, mining rights. The mining right, right is what? Right uh, is basically an intangible asset. Mining right is an intangible asset. So all the rights are kind of asset for us. And um, this will fall under the category of the current asset.
and because it is not tangible, so therefore under the category of the intangible asset. Then we have provision for doubtful debt. You remember under which category we write down the value of the provision for doubtful debt? Provision for doubtful debt. Provision for doubtful debt is again it is a current asset. All right, and. This is, this is written under the paid receivables. Let me show you. See, under the paid receivable along with the debtors, the provision for doubtful debt is also written. We, we did not wrote this in the previous class. You can if you want, if if you want to write, you can write that under the along with the paid and receivable, along with the debtors, under the paid receivable, along with the debtors. Got it understood? Is that clear? Prima, Evan, and Maria. Provision for doubtful debt because it is prepared, it is created on debtors, so it is a current asset that falls under the category of the paid receivable. I hope this is clear. Halima, Evan. Sorry? Provision for doubtful debt. Yeah, provision for doubtful debt will fall under the current asset. Major head is current asset and subhead is straight receivables. All right. Next item, the ventures. This one is easy. Please tell me, the ventures fall under which category? The venture fall under which category? It is obviously a liability. I'm giving you a hint, it is obviously a liability. But which kind of liability? It is? Current liability or a non-current liability? No, Mariam, this is a non because the venture is a long-term borrowing. Na? The venture is a long-term liability. So that falls under the non-current and under the category of long-term borrowings. All right. So if the major head is non-current liability, and subhead is long-term borrowing. Understood. Moving on to the next point, calls in advance. Calls in advance is what? Calls in advance is what? Tell me the head, major head and something. Let me give you a hint. hint. Calls in advance comes under the liability. Which, which kind of liability it will be? Current liability, yeah, that is right, Mariam, very good. Current liability. And the sub, subhead will be, subhead. Calls in advance, as you can see, this is coming under the other current liability. Yes, well done, Mariam. Other current liability. All right. Next, computer software. Computer software is our current asset. 
All right, and it is an intangible. So, measure it as current asset and intent. Sorry, measure uh, it as not current, non current asset. Right? Major it is non current asset. Non current assets and intangible assets. Right? Next, capital reserve. This one is easy. I'm sure everyone is able to tell me that. Evan, what do you think? Capital reserve will fall under which category? <clears throat> Any idea? Evan? Shareholders fund, Maria. And all the reserve for, for all the reserve. Yes, reserve and so on. Right, then the loose tools. Tell me. Just covered it in the previous question, question as well. Current asset. Current. Uh, yeah, under current. the subhead of. Under the subheads of. Inventories. Okay. Yes. Then the last item, bank overdraft. Bank overdraft. It comes under the liability anyways. This is a hint. This is a hint, everyone. Now tell me, you need to tell me the meter head and sub. Bank overdraft comes under the liability. So which kind of liability it is? Current liability or non-current liability? And under which subhead it will fall into? Mariam saying current and short-term borrowing. Yes, perfect. Current liability. Short term All right. So these kind of questions will be asked. So in order to answer these questions, you will have to remember the entire balance sheet. You have to have a good, good idea about the different types of heads and what items falls under which category. Unless and until you remember the balance sheet, you won't be able to answer. You see, some some items is obviously you have a good idea about the about some item, but certain item will become problematic for you. You won't be able to answer unless and until you remember the entire balance sheet. Like it is very obvious that debenture falls under the category of the liability, non-current liability, and long-term body. Right. Similarly, if I if I give you Items such as machinery, furniture, you already know the answer. But in this, in, in context of some item, like for example, if I gave you cause in advance, you won't be able to recall under which subhead and major head it falls into. So in order to do that, in order to answer these type of question, you will have to remember the entire balance sheet in a proper manner. All right, everyone. Let's do one last question based on it. Question three again, similar kind, similar kind of question. Then different items will be given to you, and you just need to tell me their major heads and subhead.
All right, starting with the uh, first item. Securities premium reserve. Second item is balance with bank. Unpaid dividend, vehicle, goods and transit. And one last item. Term loan, term, and all right, everyone. Is it is this question clear? You don't have to do this right now. Just note this down. I'm giving this as a homework. All right, because you understood the uh, point. Ah, huh? what kind of question is asked? The thing is to explain the. Uh, I just wanted to. Explain you the type of question that is generally put up from this this topic. So you won't be solving it right now. I'm just giving you this question as a homework, and I want all of you to try this. All right. I'm sure all of you must have written this down. And I'm giving you one more question. Question number four. What is homework as well? So, question number four, first item is bank overdraft. <clears throat> Second item is check in hand. Third item is loan schools. Long term provisions. Last is mining rights. Mm 
Learn everyone. And all of you have written this down. No, sir. Wait. Done. Wait quickly, okay. All right. So this is all about the financial statement. Uh, will will I'll be giving you a few more question or uh, through the assignment based on this topic. But right now we won't be discussing any more question based on it because this is uh, a topic. Uh, kind of you will have to basically learn the topic you will have to learn the entire balance sheet and the various head, heads and subheads of it so there is nothing much that i i'll be doing for you in this in this topic all i can do is give you questions uh, through assignment and and you know, various item which you can identify under the head and subhead these item falls and for that purpose you will have to have to remember the entire balance sheet and what are the various items that falls under which category all right hope you understand so with that uh, this topic comes to an end everybody so now we'll be starting a new chapter which is ratio analysis which is very 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 important from examination point of view because uh, you can assume that this topic uh, must be coming in your examination because there will be some question that will definitely come from this topic all right so ratio analysis is the next topic that also oh, so wait sir can you show that this number four yeah. you able to see this done alexander oh sorry what are you oh, i've been Yes. Very right, good. Now, with that, let's start the function and let's start a new chapter. So, everyone, put this heading on your notebook. Name for the topic is ratio analysis. Now see this chapter is completely formula based chapter. You will have to again this is uh, uh, the uh, basically a learning based chapter where then you will have to remember the formulas and the question that is uh, based on the ratio analysis can only be solved if the, if if you remember the formula. So this en entire chapter is completely formula based. Chapter. So I'll be uh, writing few uh, formulas for you. You will have to note that down, and we'll be discussing question based on based on that. All right. So let me tell you how many uh, types of uh, ratios are there that we'll be discussing. So basically, accounting ratio in the chapter has been categorized into four parts. We have four type of ratio: liquidity ratio, solvency ratio, activity ratio, and profitability ratio. And then there are sub categories under each of these categories. Let me tell you these things in detail. Just a moment. See, this entire chapter of ratio analysis can be broadly classified into four categories. First category is liquidity ratio and the next category is solvency ratio
and we have activity ratio. And one last ratio is profitability. So these are the different types of ratio that we need to cover in the chapter. Today we'll only talk about the liquidity ratio. And if you talk about the liquidity ratio, this, this liquidity ratio can be further classified into two categories. So under the liquidity ratio, we have two subcategories. Uh, we have basically two ratios, current ratio. Current ratio and liquid ratio. Right. And uh, current ratio, which is also known as current ratio, is also called quick ratio. Sometimes it is also called quick ratio. And liquid ratio sometimes is also known as acid test ratio. Understood? Is, is this clear, everybody? Yes. Now, if we talk about the quick ratio or the current ratio, how do we actually calculate it? Let me give you the formula. For calculating the current ratio, formula for finding out the current ratio, is current asset divided by current liability. This is it. Current ratio is calculated by dividing the current asset and current current asset is divided by current liability, we will get current ratio or we also call it quick ratio. And then there is this ideal ratio as uh, if you talk about the ideal current ratio, ideal current ratio is 2 is to 1. If any company have got the ideal uh, current ratio is 2 is to 1, that is the most ideal situation that shows the uh, uh, basically uh, that company or organization is doing fairly well. So ideal ratio, ideal current ratio is how much? 2 is to 1. Okay. All right. Now, uh, let's also talk about the quick ratio, Sorry. Uh, the, the liquid ratio, right? So in order to find out the liquid ratio, Uh, I think I'm making a mistake. I'm sorry. The, uh, just a I have to take the correction. I'm sorry. See, uh, it is not the current ratio which is called quick ratio. Liquid ratio is also known as acid test ratio. Or quick ratio, I'm sorry. Kindly do the correction. Liquid ratio is also called acid test ratio or, and it is also known as quick ratio. Current, there is no other name for the current ratio. Current ratio is only known as the current ratio. 
Okay, so to find out the current ratio, we have to apply this formula. Now we talk about the calculation of the quick ratio. We have a simple formula. Quick ratio, or you can also call it liquid ratio. Or quick ratio is calculated. By dividing the liquid as liquid asset or quick asset divided by the current liability. And ideal ratio for the liquid ratio is ideal quick ratio is one is to one. <clears throat> Tell me, everyone, is this clear? I just wrote the formula. We haven't discussed any question. I hope this is clear, everybody. Please note this down quickly. Let me know when I'm as soon as you are done. Done and Ben Halima. Ariam, you are done. You guys are writing this, no? Yes, sir. We are writing. Please note this down quickly. Tell me as soon as you are done. Done. Okay, Evan, done. Yes, sir. Done. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now, guys, everyone, uh, we'll we'll discuss the question based on it, based on the current ratio. In, in fact, first of all, so we'll we'll start from this point. We'll start with question number one from the following compute ratio. We have been provided with various information, paid receivable, prepaid expenses, cash and cash equivalent, marketable securities, land and building bills, tables, sundry creditors, debenture, inventories, expenses, table. All these items are given and we need to figure, figure out the value of the current ratio. We need to figure out the current ratio. Okay. Uh, so I guess the question is pretty much clear to everybody. Then the question is very straightforward. It just requires us to find out the current ratio. Right? Shall we start? Everyone? Yes. Okay, so for now, you just take the screenshot of the question quickly so that whenever you want to revise, you can refer back to the question. Done. Done. Good job. <clears throat> okay. Now, see, we need to find out the value of the, we need to find out the current ratio. So 
All right, we will write down solution for question one. We need to figure out the value of the, uh, we need to figure out the current ratio in this question, right? We will first of all apply the formula. And if you remember, the formula for current ratio is very simple. It is current asset divided by current liability. All right. Now, see, in this question, the value of the current asset and current liability is not directly given in the question. We'll have to prepare an extra working group to figure out the value of the current asset and current liability that I'm doing here. Working group. First of all, we want the value of the current asset. So in order to find out the value of the current asset, what we'll do, we'll have to add certain items. Let's figure out which, uh, what are the different items that fall under the, under the category of the current asset. So starting with the trade receivable, I'm sure everybody knows that trade receivable is a current asset, right? And prepared expenses is also a current asset. Cash and cash equivalent, again, it is a current asset. Marketable securities is also current asset. But land and building is not current asset, right? And on the right-hand side of the table, you can see bills payable, this is not current asset. Sundry creditor is not current asset. Debenture, not current asset. Inventories is a current asset. And expense payable, it is not a current asset. All right. So what we'll have to do, we'll have to add trade receivable, first of all. And we'll add prepaid expenses. Then we'll take the value of the cash and cash equivalent. Also, marketable securities. Then we'll add the value of the inventories. Right? And now taking the value of all these items. Trade receivable is given in the question as 3,60,000. Cash and cash equivalent, sorry, prepaid expenses is 80,000. Cash and cash equivalent, 1 lakh. Marketable securities is also 1 lakh. And last item is inventories, which is given as 1,60,000. And we'll add all these items, and we'll be getting 360 plus 80, 440, 540, 640, 8 lines. Right? Understood? Underst everyone understood the calculation of current asset? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you written this down? Wait, sir. Please note this down quickly. We need to find out the value of the current liabilities as well. To find out the value of the current liability, we'll take the value of uh, first of all, the bills payable. That's sundry creditors. That's the venture is a long term liability, everyone. Right? It is not to be considered as a current liability. Inventories is then current as is a current asset. And expense payable. Expense. Payable is a current liability. Now, right. adding all these values, PP 40,000. 
plus sundry creditors to that plus expenses on that 60000 it adding all of these you will get 7 lakh and 60000 no no i'm sorry uh, 40 this is not 4 lakh this is 40000 2 lakh 40000 plus 160 is will be 4 lakh Tell me everyone, is this clear? Uh, Abin, Halima, Mariam. All these calculations is clear for all of you. Yes. Okay. Now, guys, we'll take the value of the current asset from here and the current liability from here and we'll put the value in the formula. Current asset is 8 lakhs. As for the calculation, current liability is 4 lakhs. As for calculation, and the ratio will be 8 lakhs divided by 4 lakhs. Will be ratio. So we have got the ideal ratio. So every time we'll get the ideal ratio or what? No. This is uh, uh, this time we got the ideal ratio. That, that does not mean that every time we'll be calculating current ratio that we will get the ideal ratio. Ratio can be anything depending upon the value we are provided in the question. Understood, everyone? Everybody written this down? Yes, sir. Why do we need that liability is half of assets in a business? Why do we need? Why do we need that assets double of liabilities in business? Like, is it important? Current, the, uh, if we have, uh, that simply means Harima, that we have sufficient amount of asset to pay off our liability. If liability is double, then, oh, sorry, if the asset is double and the liability, that means we'll be easily able to pay off our all the current obligations. That is why ideal ratio is to be kept as 2 is to 1. So you should have at least twice the asset as compared to the your current liability. Understood? Okay, I mean it could assets could be more also and liabilities could be less also. Yeah. yeah. This one is ideal. Yeah, this is this is the ideal ratio. But uh, it is preferred that if you have a higher asset, if you have a higher current ratio, that is much, much better. And lower current uh, current ratio shows uh, uh, basically bad position of the entity of the organization, poor position of the uh, poor accounting position of the company. Understood? Yeah. Right. All right. So this was all about the question number one. Now let's move to the next question, everyone. But before attempting the next next question, we'll have to understand some something. Or you won't be able to solve this question unless or until you have the idea about the balance sheet. So I'll have to explain the balance sheet a little before explaining this question, before doing this question. So let's do that first. We'll talk about the question number two later. See, so I'm sure all of you are already aware about the balance sheet. Huh? Balance sheet, I'm talking about the uh, horizontal balance. I'm not talking about the vertical balance sheet. Balance sheet that we used to do, we used to prepare at the time of the partnership. On the left hand side, we have liabilities, right? And on the right hand side of the balance sheet, we have the assets. And under the liability, stop. Yes. <clears throat> all right. So uh, I'm sure all of you are already aware that on the liability side, the first item that we write is 
केयर होल्डर्स फंड and apart from shareholders fund there is there are non current liabilities like the borrowing long term borrowing and debentures non current liabilities written as ncl and then there are current liabilities as well and on the asset side we have two categories non current asset all the assets is divided into two parts the non current asset and the current asset right and you already know that the sum total of the asset is should should be equal to the liability right na asset should be equal to liability now see one more thing that you should remember that the sum total of shareholders fund and non current liabilities collectively this is collectively called what this is called capital employed you have to remember this sum total of shareholders fund and non current liability is called capital employed. and similarly sum total of non current liability with the current liability this is called total debt of the company this is called total debt you understand that so if some if if in any question you are provided with the capital employed then then uh, uh, please consider that if capital employed is given in the question that means that you are provided with the collective value of the shareholders fund as well as the current liability and similarly if you are provided with the total debt that means the total debt is the sum total of the current liability and current on current liability all right i hope i hope this is clear to you apart from this you i'm sure of you all of you already know that the total liabilities is equal to assets always so if total liability is equal to asset it also means that we can also say that shareholders fund plus non current liability plus current liability is equal to asset can we say that yes or no can we write this as like this yes or no yes na okay and and we can also write it like this that uh, we can combine these value shareholders fund and non current liability to write this as share uh, capital employed capital employed plus current liability is equal to the total asset or you can also call it is equal to total liability All right, you can combine this na shareholders fund plus non current liability plus current liability equal equal to sorry capital employed plus current liability equal to asset or or can also be equal to liabilities. Can you say that? Are you exactly clear to you? Are you exactly clear to you? Understood, everyone. Yeah. And apart from this, we can also write this as we can combine this na. and non current liability and current liability and if if we combine this the equation will be shareholders fund plus total debt equals to asset of the company or also equal to liabilities of the company can we say that yes or no what do you think abin halima i hope this is clear everybody yes, yes. all right so keeping these thing these things in mind we'll start a 
you start the second question now you will be able to understand i'm, I'm sure that you will be able to understand the second question now so again in this question you need to find out the current ratio wherein total asset fixed tangible asset shareholders fund non current liability and current lab non current li investment is given and we need to figure out the current ratio in this question all of you have written this down because this is going to be useful while solving other questions if you haven't written if you haven't written this down i would recommend that you note this in your notebook tell me guys whether you have written it or not or you do you want to write it or not halima writing writing okay mariam is also writing even please write this down quickly okay sir this is going to be useful while attempting question based on current ratio and other liquid ratio and quick ratio down सर कहीं done everyone so it's done all right okay okay everyone so let's let's uh, start question number 2 and uh, before that i'll take a screenshot of 
क्वेश्चन नंबर टू then everyone then yeah. see again in this question we need to find out the current ratio and for that we'll apply the formula same formula current ratio equals to current asset minus Current liability. Again, in the question, current asset and current liability is not given directly in the question. So, to find out the value of the current asset, we'll be preparing a working note. First of all, we'll find out the value of the current asset. So to find out the current asset, what we can do? Let's see. See, we are provided with the total asset, right? Everyone is able to see that total asset is given as twenty lakhs, right? If out of total asset, if out of total asset we subtract the fixed asset and the non-current investment, you can see that on the right hand side of the table, we have non-current investment. Subtracting fixed tangible asset and non-current investment out of the total asset, the remaining asset that will be left will be will be called the current asset, right? Now, total asset out of total asset, if we subtract the fixed asset or simply fixed tangible asset. And also subtract non-current investment. Our uh, investment are what? Investment are asset, but non-current invest investment are not current asset. Non-current investment, if it is subtracted, the remaining amount that will be left will be called current asset. Right now, so out of twenty lakh, if we subtract ten lakh. Which is the value of the fixed tangible asset, and also subtract six lakh. The remaining amount will be four lakh. Tell me, everyone, is this clear? Maria, Mabin, Alima. Yes. All right. So this was the current. Now. <clears throat> We need to find one more thing. We need to find out the current liability. Current liability. Now to figure out the current liability, what we can do? Can anyone please tell me what we can do to find out the current liability? Tell me. Tell me, anyone, what we can do? Find out the current liability. We can add the uh -huh. no. See, see, everyone knows that total asset is always equal to total liability. Can we say that? Can we say that the total asset which is given in the question, total asset. Is always equal to total liability. Can we say yes or no? Yeah. And if out of total liability, we subtract the shareholders' fund, 
and we subtract the non parent liability which is given in the question what is left what will be will be getting current liabilities right exactly so to find out the current liability what we can do we can take the value of the total asset number 1 and out of total asset we'll simply subtract the shareholders fund and we'll also subtract the non current liabilities so why we are taking the value of the total asset why because the total asset is always equal to total liabilities this formula by applying this simple formula we can get the value of the current liability so total total asset is 20 lakh given in the question your holders fund is also given as 1 lakh 80 thousand 1.80 lakh and we we'll subtract the amount of on current liability which is given as 5 point understood and after cal after making the calculation we we'll get two lakh Tell me, everyone, is this clear for all of you or not? Maryam, Evan, Halima, is mm -hmm. it clear? Yeah. All right. So now we can take the value and put it here. Four lines divided by. Again, we are getting the ideal ratio. Two. One. Understood, everybody. Shall we move to the next question? Uh, sir, wait, sir. Can you show the current liabilities? Done? Yes, sir. Done. Okay. Uh, we have one more question. Question number three. Please take this screenshot. We need to find out the current ratio again in this question. Done, everyone. Done with the screenshot. We need to find out the current ratio again. So, current ratio is current asset. Minus. Current liability. In the current asset, okay, the current asset is already given in the question. Current asset is already there in the question, one lakh. But current liabilities continue. So to find out the current liability, what we can do? We have been provided with the working capital. Any idea what we can do to find out the current liability? find out the current liability you can apply the formula for working capital if anyone of you remember or know the formula of working capital the work formula for finding out the working capital is very simple the working capital current is calculated by liabilities yes, yes well done very good current assets minus current liability all right 
So working capital is given in the question itself, six lakh. We can take the value of the working capital here, and we can put the value of the current asset given in the question, and the balancing value will be the current lakh. Okay, so in this case, the liability will be. Okay, so current asset is one lakh and working capital is six lakh. Are we going to get the answer in negative? Current liabilities. Working capital is six. Just a minute. Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, it will be, I guess, six lakh. Minus one lakh, so this should be five lakh. But I'm getting the negative value. I'm not sure I'm, I'm doing it right or not. Current asset minus current liability. That is right. So six minus one will be five. Minus five hundred. Anyone able to find any mistake in the solution? Let's check it again. Go to calculation. Let's confirm the question. Current asset is given as okay. 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 Go. Current asset is not one lakh. This is. And like so, I I made mistake. I'm sorry. This is not one lakh. This is ten lakh. And here as well, ten lakh. Now subtracting this, yeah, we'll be getting ten lakhs minus six lakh equal to four. Understood? Is it clear, everyone? Yes. Okay. Now we can put the value here, and the answer will be two point five. Right? Two point five is to one. Got it? Is it clear, Alima, Evan, Mariam? Yes. Okay. All right, everyone. So uh, these kind of question is generally put up from this topic current based on current ratio. We'll discuss few more question. We'll be discussing question based on liquid ratio. Is that I mean the quick ratio? Then we'll discuss the other type of ratio in the next class. Solvency ratio is there. Activity ratio, profitability ratio. All right. So these this topic is very very important from examination point of view, and the uh, this topic is completely. a uh, learning based topic you will have to remember the formulas all the question that will be asked in your examination from this topic will be completely formula based questions i'm giving you few question for the homework as well can you take the screenshot of the question quickly take the screenshot of question number 4 make it quick alima just tell me whenever you are done then let me know when you whenever you are done taking the screenshot done Done. Question number five as well. These are very small and easy questions. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव टेक स्क्रीन शॉट डन टेक पिक्चर ऑफ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एज वेल फिक्स सेवन एंड एट राइट सो आई एम आई हैव गिवन यू फाइव क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट आई एम श्योर यू विल बी एबल टू डू दैट सर कैन यू सो सेवन सेवन All right, uh, Mariam, I've been. Thanks for joining, everyone. We'll see you in the.